Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Fresh Fruit Magazine and today the UC Cooperative Extension hosted a stone fruit tour at the Kearney Ag Center. One of the topics addressed was subsurface drip irrigation. Here's Becky Fain who talked about the benefits of converting to subsurface drip. It's an option that growers have now since we have more and more information and more uh, research and, and experimentation on it that gives them an opportunity to manage weeds a little bit better because the subsurface can keep the orchard floor dry and it is a very uniform method of water application. It can be uh, an aid in getting uniform tree growth and development and cropping and uh, subsurface drip, uh, obviously just like in surface drip and other fertigation programs can be very effective method of uh, applying your fertilizers and any soil amendments that you can put through the irrigation water. Um, so, and, it, and uh, we advocate your know, monitoring, as you mentioned before, with control systems that monitor uh, the, the flow. And once you measure the flow, then you know what you're applying. And a lot of other systems don't always measure, and it can always be uh, as. Uh, timely with the water applications when you don't know how much you're applying. Um, so there's a number of features of the subsurface drip and we think that we, you can manage the system such that the area right around the tubing is real wet as I mentioned earlier and yet there's a large soil volume that's at just very um, optimum soil moisture for both aeration and water. I think if you're, if you're watching your flows and your pressure, that's a helpful aid in, in, in knowing what pressures you should be operating at and what flows you get at those pressures. But um, I still think there's also nothing that replaces, you know, going through your blocks on a regular basis. And if there's um, a, a leak, if there's a problem, you will see it. There'll be water coming to the surface. We just talked about gopher strikes, and when there's a gopher strike, it's it's a miniature flood right there. And that's, you know, be something so out of the ordinary with subsurface drip that you'll know that there's an issue there. Just as if a coyote cut through a micro sprinkler and, and you had a miniature flood in a, in a micro sprinkler area. Now, would you say, though, if there, if there was an orchard with high gopher pressure or a high history of gophers, that maybe you want to consider not doing well, subsurface Well, this field trip? was pretty bad. I mean, even before we planted the trees, I remember seeing, uh, you know, the gopher activity and kind of being a little concerned about that. But um, we've been okay with it. I mean, we've had the first year, not this year, but last year, the first year that we had um, the tops on the trees as far as the grafting, we did have some crews come through and, and bait. Um, but um, gophers are not real active in the heat of the summer. They're active in the spring and the fall, as I understand. And um, I guess by the fall, it wasn't so much of an issue. I understand there's going to be some concern about the unknown if you haven't tried it. We used to tell people if they were interested in trying it, try it on a small block, try it on a, a couple of acres and, and learn from your own mistakes. And I've recently heard uh, another uh, angle on that idea in that because there has been more research done and there is a lot more information out there and people have tried it that they'd rather see people um, invest a, a 20 acre block because then they'll really be careful about it because they've got so much more land and productivity uh, at risk. So that kind of is uh, a different opinion but um, I certainly would say you need to be able to, to monitor and, and keep track of, of what you're doing. Thank you, Becky. Learn more about this in the coming issue of California Fresh Fruit Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.